to the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Perhaps I should have said, to the glory of Christ the King, our King, our very King. You know, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. It's the first Sunday of the church year. Today is the last Sunday of the church year. And we begin in Advent next week, recognizing the coming of Christ at Christmas. We go through the Christmas season after that. Then the Epiphany season, where we recognize His glory and His greatness. Then Lent, when we humble ourselves for what He has done for us. Into Holy Week, when He is crucified. Into Easter, when He raises from the dead. Through the Easter season to Pentecost. The Pentecost season, which ends really this Sunday today, with Christ the King Sunday. A series, a cycle of seasons of the liturgical year that are brought to us so that we can recognize as its culmination, at its climax, at its uh, the highest point, its pinnacle, Christ the King. For he is truly the King of the universe, the King of the world, and even the King of my own life. And that's something many of us don't recognize. A lot of us think in terms of religion. We think in terms of God as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Jesus as the Son of God, but we don't take him into our lives as King of our own hearts. I dare say there was a time in my life, as there may be in your life today, where he is indeed God, he is indeed your Savior, but you're the king of your own life. You're the ruler of your own world. Or perhaps someone else is. Or perhaps some famous figure is in politics or cinema or wherever it may come from. And anything that person says is something by God we can walk by. We all go about those ways. I found my own faith to be hollow. Hollow because I was following a God without taking to heart that Christ is my King. Without taking to heart that I do not live in a democracy. So here in America, America's democracy. Forget about America. I love our country. I love our country. But America will go down as Rome went down, as Greece went down, as every great nation of the world goes down. The only thing that will stand is the kingdom of God and Christ as its king. And when I came about in my own heart understanding that I wasn't fully given over to my king, it was when I recognized a man named Jesus. Not Christianity, not Episcopalianism, not Roman Catholicism where I had my start, nothing else but the man named Jesus. And when you get him wrapped into your mind, your heart, your soul, and you understand who he is as the Son of God, who he is as God himself, what he has done, what he has promised to do, the victories he has had over death and hell itself, you get to a point where he is indeed king. He is Christ the King on this Christ the King Sunday. This stole I wear I pull out of the closet about six times a year. It's the first one I was ever given. In fact, I was given this stole the night that it was announced I would be a priest. I wasn't a priest for months yet, but it was given to me on the night I was announced to be a priest. And I love it because it has a, a Bethlehem star for Christmas. It has a, a last supper kind of a figure in the Holy Eucharist. It has a, a fish, if you would, a green fish for the ordinary time of the year where Jesus' ministry took out in his life. It has the cross and Easter and the victory over death, and it has the dove of Pentecost. All these things celebrate this stone is special for the great triumphs of Jesus Christ. What about Christ the King? It's got that one too. <laughs> right over here, the crown. The crown of Jesus Christ the King. You can see this later if you want to see my full resplendence in the hallway after the service. I'll show you the best of who I am. Christ the King. Now, when I understood that, I was looking for it to be fed more deeply by it. When I bumped into a man named Shadrach Meshach Lockridge, S.M. Lockridge, this guy's mother named him Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. Just like in the book of Daniel, we have Shadrach Meshach and Abednego. She thought, I don't know why she left out Abednego. Give him three names, <laughs> throw the whole bucket. But somehow she knew he was born and anointed to preach. And this man in Texas, born around 1909, I think, raised up in these small Texas churches, became a great preacher in those churches, eventually would preach worldwide, eventually would preach for Billy Graham at Crusades, eventually was writing books, was married to one woman for 59 years, and was just this great exponent of Christianity in the 20th century with this 
big booming gospel with long no voice, and he would preach about my king, and he would yell it out at the top of his lungs about my king. I got it on a cassette. I taped it off of something, and I would ride around in my car for probably three or four years, listening to it over and over and over, to the point where I could do it rote. I could give you the mind written speech at one point. I can't do it anymore by rote memory. I did it for the parish a couple of years ago, but there was a problem. I'm not good enough. I don't have the pipes. I don't have the chops, as they say in the singing industry. I don't have what it takes to pull it off. We need to channel on every Christ the King Sunday, in my opinion, Shadrach, Meshach, and Lockeridge, and his my King sermon, which he did, as I said, worldwide, many nations. So what I've done is I've recruited someone who's got more power than I do, someone who has more ability than I do, and we're going to channel that sermon this morning. But as we do it, in one minute we're going to do it from the pulpit, we need help. When he did these sermons, the place thundered with people cheering him on and going. He would give up a choir, give me an amen! Give it to me. king. 
No means of measure can define his limitless love. Well, I want to tell you that he is enduringly strong. He is entirely sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally graceful. He is imperially powerful. He is impartially merciful. Now that's my king. Do you know him? Yeah. No far-seen telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shore. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. He's the greatest phenomenon that ever crossed the horizons of this world. You see, he's God's son. He's the sinner's savior. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He is august. He is unique. He is unparalleled. He is unprecedented. He stands alone in himself. Well, let me tell you, he is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He is the supreme problem in higher criticism. He is the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He is the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He is the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. Amen. Amen. That's right. He's the miracle of the age. He is the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. That's my king. I wonder if you know him today. Yeah. He's the only one able to supply all of our needs. Amen. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes. He saves. He strengthens. He sustains. He guards. He guides. He heals the sick. He even cleanses the lepers. Amen. You see, he forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? Yes. yes. Well, let me tell you a little bit more. <laughs> My king is the key of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. He is the roadway to righteousness. He is the highway to holiness. He is the gateway of glory. He is the master of the mighty. He is the captain of the conquerors. He is the head of the heroes. He is the leader of the legislators. He is the governor of the governors. He is the overseers of the overcomers. He's the prince of princes. He is the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords. And that's my king. Oh, yes, that's my king. Let me tell you a little more. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish that I could describe him to you. <laughs> but you see, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. I'm coming to tell you, heaven cannot contain him, let alone a man explain him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. I don't think you heard what I just said. You can't live without him. That's right. Well, you know those Pharisees? Those Pharisees. 
they could not stand him. But you know what? They found out that they could not stop him. The witnesses could not get their testimonies to agree. Pilate could not find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death could not handle him. And the grave could not hold him. Amen. That's my king. Yes, sir, that is my king. Praise the Lord. He always has been and he always will be. He has no predecessor and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him and there will be nobody after him. You can't impeach him and he's not going to resign. <laughs> For thy Lord Jesus is the kingdom and the power and the glory. You know all the glory is his. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know forever is a long, mighty long time. And ever and ever and ever and ever. Let the church say amen. amen. 